What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. As you can see, it's coming together piece by piece, brick by brick, wood panel by wood panel. I am very aware that those are not on the wall. They haven't been stuck on there yet. I'm still deciding whether or not that's going to look good. We've got these multicolored pieces of wood that adhes to the wall. I'm trying to figure out if it's worth doing it for this little section over here. Ah, it looks pretty good. I'm still waiting on something for back there. Another little lighting piece. I never thought I'd be the guy that puts weird colored lights in the bike if it's YouTube videos. But thus, here we are. And we are here to talk about your rookie drafts. Again, they're still going on. I know a lot of you have had your rookie drafts already. But some of you probably still have a lot of your rookie drafts. All right, People do it at different times. Rookie drafts are still going on. It's hot and heavy right now rookie season. So I haven't really fully focused on season long stuff. Haven't fully focused on the 2021 season. We're still very much in dynasty rookie startup rookie draft mode, but starting tomorrow, we're getting back into the season long videos. But today we're talking about some of the rookies that you should under no circumstances draft at their current ADP. And we have collected data from a bunch of the big dogs, rookie drafts thus far. These are paid leagues. So the ADP is Mwah, primo and we're looking at it and I'm, I'm saying to myself how is this guy going here how is this guy dropping here why the fuck would anybody take running back x this early when you could take wide receiver y three picks later all right we're here to break it down a little bit and we are doing a list of my do not draft rookies for 2021 rookie drafts i want y'all to drop in the comments below who are some of the rookies that you are staying away from based on their current ADP? Our ADP is live in our Rookie Dynasty Draft Guide, which you can cop on bdge.store. So without further ado, let's tuck our shirts in. Zip up. Let's stop yelling. And let's eat. So when we're looking at the first round of rookie drafts, I'm going to be honest, man. There's not really a pick on the board that I don't like. If you're stacked with first round rookie picks this year, you're going to walk away from the draft feeling damn good. The only thing I would say is like, I'm not a huge fan of taking Kyle Pitts just because of the tight end positional value before like the 107 ish, but I'm not really going to fault you for banking on talent. All right. Can't fault you for taking a guy like Kyle Pitts who you want to gamble that he's going to be generational. Go for it. It's what fucking fantasy football is all about. You have fun. I have fun making fun of you for having fun. But the quarterback situation, you have five top 15 quarterbacks go off the board. Thus, all of them deserve to be in the first round of rookie drafts. You have Jamar Chase. You have Devontae Smith. You have Jalen Waddle, who all are fantastic talents in their own right, but also get ridiculous draft capital in the real NFL draft. So those guys are going to be up there. You have Rashad Bateman, who I love. First round pick. Weird landing spot, but end of the first round is a perfect spot for him. You have Najee Harris. You have Travis Etienne. First round running bikes. You have Javante Williams. Barely clipped into the second round, but the team traded up for him. So you have a lot of guys that fit securely into that first round, and I don't feel like anybody is being reached on in the first round. However, 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 when we get to the second round, it's where the value starts to tail off. And that's just a, a product of this draft class overall. And I, I would say this, like it's a lot, it's a lot, a lot, a lot more important for you to hit on your first round picks than it is you missing on your second, third, fourth round pick. Second round can still definitely be a, a, a big place of value and a big place of productivity for your team going forward. But spend more time making sure you hit on the first, second rounds of your rookie drafts. Spend less time trying to be cute and trying to hit on sleepers in the third or fourth round because... They're all a coin flip at best. Actually, way, way, way less than a coin flip. You probably have like a 15% chance on hitting a third or fourth round running back or wide receiver or tight end or whatever the fuck you're doing in those later round drafts. Much more important to make sure you hit on the early rounds. It's all relative, right? Because you miss on a first round pick in your rookie drafts, your league mates hit on somebody, that puts you at such a such a big disadvantage. Like even think about it from a season long perspective, right? Somebody drafts Derrick Henry in the first round, two picks later, you took Josh Jacobs this year. Only one of y'all has a playoff spot locked up come December. All that being said, y'all need to know who to stay away from in the middle rounds because Dynasty is all about depth. And these hits and misses add up over the long span. And listen, I know your girl won't tell you the hard truth. She's saying depth don't matter, baby. But Uncle Nicky's here to tell you in Dynasty, it's the only thing that matters. It's all about depth. The first player that you do not want to line your depth chart with in Dynasty rookie drafts is Kenny Gainwell. Philadelphia Eagles running back out of Memphis. He was the sixth pick in the fifth round, 150th overall. His current ADP in our Big Dogs rookie drafts is the 210 in Superflex. 
And I knew no matter where he ended up going, I knew that there was going to be a Kenny Gainwell problem in rookie drafts this year when people on Twitter lost their minds over the fact that he weighed in at 201 pounds and ran a 4 5 2 40 yard dash. It makes him close to the most average athlete at the NFL running back position of all time. Here's what it gets down to. He is a phenomenal pass catching running back. Really, 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 really good. But he's also a fifth round pick. Uh, That, for better or worse, basically begins and ends the argument, okay? There isn't a position in which draft capital matters more for predicting future success than the running back position. It's the most predictive statistic of any when it comes to running backs and running backs are extremely important in fantasy football. You look back over the last 10 years. Since 2010, there have been 107 running backs drafted in rounds five through seven of the NFL draft. Just 10 of them, 10 of those guys have delivered a top 24 fantasy running back season at least one time. 10 of 107 from rounds five through seven. Okay. That is 9.3%. All that is is one season of top 24 fantasy production. That's not even a lot. The running back 24 does not even move the needle for you in fantasy. You have six of them who have delivered a top 12, so an RB1 season. Those six guys, Aaron Jones, Jordan Howard, Alfred Morris, Latavius Murray, Jay Jai, and Chris Carson. Now, I know some people have compared Gainwell to Aaron Jones, but you'll notice that the other five guys that cracked the RB1 conversation are not pass catchers. They fell into that workhorse role because they are a bigger back and the team was like, oh, you're the bigger back. You're the next guy up. Take the volume. Okay. Volume leads to fantasy points, not getting cute, not trying to figure out who you think is going to be efficient. It, It rarely ever works out. And you look at the Eagles backfield, man, it's not exactly open for opportunity either. There's not a question that Miles Sanders is still the starter in Philadelphia. And uh, and despite what we saw last year, he's still a pretty good pass catching running back. He's athletic. Boston Scott is still here. They re-signed Jordan Howard to a one-year deal. They just brought on Carryon Johnson, which probably means that one of those two guys are going to be off the roster by the time the season starts. But regardless, the backfield is looking like a college campus in McDonald's at 2 a.m. Man, that shit is crowded. Can Kenny Gainwell be a hit? Sure, but it's an uphill battle. And a second round rookie price for me is just too high considering he's a fifth round pick okay there are guys like Amari Rogers there are Dwayne Eskridge who was a second round pick in the NFL draft as much as he's going into a crowded situation still going to Russell Wilson and he's still got that real draft capital man I'd even take probably Kellen Mond over Kenny Gainwell on the upside that he becomes the Minnesota Vikings starter next year I get it Gainwell was a fun prospect but take someone else at the 210 211 or just move the pick the value in the late second early third round of rookie drafts this year just is not there And neither is the value for Tutu Atwell. Los Angeles Rams, second round pick this year, man, out of Louisville. He's currently going at the 310. So people have kind of adjusted accordingly to what Tutu Atwell's value should be. He was a second round pick for the Rams, 25th in the second round, which is 57th overall. I don't think I could find a pick in the NFL draft that I liked less than this one. I mean, he's 155 pounds. Uh, Instead of drafting a guy like Terrace Marshall, who will wind up being what the Rams thought Van Jefferson was going to be last year. They decided to draft a player that I feel like if we had hard knocks this year, Aaron Donald would likely mistake him for a towel boy. Schematically, I'm trying to figure out what it is that Sean McVay saw in Tutu Atwell that he needed to spend this this type of draft capital on him for. And I'm like, okay, they bring in Deshaun Jackson, first of all. So his rookie year the chances of him getting on the field and being productive are like close to none as are Deshaun Jackson's chances of actually staying on the field and healthy. But the point remains, I'm like, okay, is it because they need to have one speedster? They don't, they have Robert Woods, they have Cooper cup. And we saw what Brandon cooks did in this offense a few years, bike popped off her career high in 2018, 1,272 receiving yards, 80 catches. Regardless, Deshaun Jackson is not sitting on the bench if he is healthy. Okay. So on top of one, the opportunities being evasive for Tutu Atwell, there are some obvious glaring differences if you're going to look at like Tutu versus like Brandon Cook's comp because they use Brandon Cook's in a, in a manner that I would imagine they want to use Tutu Atwell down the field and in the screen game. That's where Brandon Cook's really went nuts when he was in a Rams uniform back then. And I have a really in de- in depth, like detailed write up in the draft guide, which we cover all of these rookies in depth. Every single one of them's got their own player profile written up about them. And we go deep into Brandon Cook's usage back on the Rams at that point. So the difference is one Cooks was already a veteran by the time he he came into LA. Uh, he was a player with three consecutive 1000 yard seasons. So the fit was going to work regardless of where he ended up landing. And Brandon Cooks legitimately has 35 pounds on Tutu Atwell. 
you could probably count on like two fingers how many times Brandon Cooks has been able to say that during his NFL career. We're calling his ass Tutu Flatwell from now on because Brandon Cooks runs a 4-3-3. Tutu Atwell was supposed to be this elite speed guy, ran a 4-4-4. For someone that's 155 pounds, that is a problem. But again, schematically, I'm trying to figure it out. I guess I could see where they wanted to use Tutu. He's a big screen play guy. He's really fast. He could break off these 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 plays on the screens, which is what Brandon Cooks did during his time there. Basically, Brandon Cooks was using one of two ways. It was either a screen play or it was a target fucking so far downfield that you need binoculars to basically see where he was at. So I would imagine Tutu in the future would take that role. I'm, I'm like trying to make a case for Tutu Atwell as a second round pick, but 155 pounds, man. They extended Robert Woods. They extended Cooper Cup. Just, 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 just no. Just no. Another player that we're just going to say no to, absolutely fucking not to, is the Los Angeles Chargers sixth round pick out of Missouri, Larry Roundtree. Current ADP of 312. Th this one I have a problem. I would much rather take Tutu Atwell at 310 than Larry Roundtree at 312. So Roundtree goes off the board, round six, pick 14 in the sixth round, 198th overall. He's going ahead of Elijah Mitchell in rookie draft, who's in just as a, of a messy backfield situation, but he's actually good at football. He's actually athletic. He's going into an offense that literally carousels like late round running backs into fantasy relevance. Larry Roundtree is going ahead of like third round pick Anthony Schwartz on in, in rookie drafts in the ADP. So just absolutely not. On his absolute best day, on his absolute best day, Larry Roundtree is is like Alex Collins, but take 15th of a second slower on the 40 yard dash. Alex Collins ran like a four, five, nine or four, six or something. Larry Roundtree legitimately was a four, seven, five guy. Now I'm not like everything doesn't revolve around the 40 yard dash, but it gives you a baseline for whether or not you're like a relative NFL athlete and a player. And Larry Roundtree is neither of those. He's a guy that got like some pre-draft type. I don't know why, because he he's tough and he falls forward. And that does absolutely fucking nothing for us in fantasy football. If you took Roundtree and you made him athletic, you basically get Josh Kelly, which is what the Chargers already have. And they took him last year in the fourth round. I never thought Kelly was a good running back. I was never excited about him. I always thought Kelly's best attribute was his availability and, and his ability to just stay on the field and do anything on three downs, but not do and not excel at anything. That's Larry Roundtree, except Larry Roundtree doesn't, doesn't excel at anything. Roundtree will be 24 by the time the season ends. He is older than Alexander Madison. He's older than AJ Dillon. He's older than Josh Jacobs, basically every back from last year's class, as well as some of the backs, as I said, Josh Jacobs, Alexander Manis Madison from the 2019 class. All right. Being a pick this late gives Roundtree like just as good of a chance to make the roster as it does for him not to make the roster. End of the day, he's just too slow to be a real threat in this backfield or to, to any backfield in the NFL. So do not draft Larry Roundtree. The last player on this list that I'm not going to go into deep is, is Ian Book. Notre Dame quarterback drafted to the Saints in the fourth round. He is just so bad. He's just not a good quarterback. He's going right now in at the end of the third round, early fourth round of rookie picks or rookie drafts. I don't know what you're expecting to happen. Do you think that just Jameis Winston completely flames out? They don't resign him. They just let Taysom Hill walk. Like there is just no shot that Ian Book becomes a starting quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. He's really, really bad. Please do not waste a pick on Ian Book in Superflex dynasty drafts in, in any drafts. One quarterback, Superflex, three quarterbacks. Don't do it. Realistically, at the end of the day, when I look at these rookie drafts, I would trade away as many late second and onward picks for future picks as I possibly could. Something I did this year, I, t I traded two of my third round picks for next year's third and next year's second, which will probably be like a 211 or a 212, but I'd rather have that than the third round picks this year because there's just no value in the skill position players in 2020 rookie drafts. So move your picks for next year. Move up around if you have. Move move two third round picks for next year's second round pick if you have to. If it's a mid to early round, second round pick, whatever, whatever, whatever you got to do to get away from the third and fourth rounds of this year's draft class. Okay. I hope that helps you out there. I hope these are guys that you did stay away from if you already had your rookie drafts. Try to move them if you got them already. Not that anyone's looking to buy them. Uh, but yeah, just want to drop this little vid for you. Make sure you go cop the Rookie Dynasty Guide on bdge.store. You got all of our Dynasty rankings. You got our Rookie rankings. You got in-depth player profiles for every single fantasy-relevant rookie. Hit the thumbs up if y'all enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I will see y'all tomorrow. Three running backs I cannot stop fucking drafting in 2021 fantasy drafts already. My highest exposure. That's it. I love y'all. I'm out. <laughs>